Okay, here we are. So, on the left, we've got the uh, February 16 version of the Constitution, and on the right, the March 7 version of the Constitution. Uh, so, I made a first video for it to make, I mean, a second video on the Constitution to show the changes that have been made uh, uh, up to January, uh, up to February 16, since uh, November 5, when we first started writing the Constitution. And now I just want to present some of the, the latest updates to the Constitution on March 7th. So on the right, you've got March 7th, the newest versions. So I've already made videos explaining the, the changes I had made uh, to the uh, to the Constitution uh, on Section 1 here, the Fundamental Ethical Principles. So that has not changed, so I'm not going to go over that again. Um, section 2, Rules of Governance. Um, it hasn't changed fundamentally all that much. I've already shown the major changes uh, that had already been done. Uh, what I have done is kind of simplified a bit the, this, the actual system of governance here in uh, what's become Article 5. Um, a system of government where we've got represent, uh, representatives and direct democracy. I used to have like separate sort of um, articles here or separate sub sort of sections rather for uh, when it was at a more local level and at a more uh, global level, and now I've just uh, unified that so it's made shorter, and um, but otherwise the basic gist has not uh, changed. I've just it's mostly been a bit of rearranging of what I've what I've uh, been like, you know, where I write stuff, um, but there isn't really any any like major uh, particular policy like change, uh, except uh, for this, is that instead of saying that there's a, a chamber for legislative, executive, and judiciary, um, I'm saying that there's at least uh, one chamber of representatives, um, and there can be additionally extra chambers for judiciary matters, and then there, there can be less judges for judiciary matters, only 10. So what I'm saying is that basically there's one chamber for each for each level of governments for each jurisdiction. There's one chamber that does both a legislative and executive, and potentially judiciary, and potentially otherwise there's additional judiciary ones. So that is actually what what has uh, indeed changed. Um, <clears throat> sorry, everybody knows. <clears throat> okay. And economics, section three. So this, I, now I've rearranged, um, I've combined what used to be uh, article two and article six, uh, article two on the sort of production, what the, especially what the government, you know, what the government did and what the government didn't do. And article six was how corporations function. And now I've merged that into a really big article two, but it made sense to do that because now article two is really about production and corporations are really about production. Um, it didn't really make sense to have them in separate articles. So now, um, what I've said before is that it was more like a typical liberal system where the, the government does do the few things where the market doesn't really do well and the rest was uh, done by private corporations, which were, if they became big, they had to be owned by multiple small shareholders. And so you couldn't have any big owners of big corporations. Uh, but now I've gone a step further and decided that actually all those such corporations, all corporations over, you know, a few million in assets or revenue uh, currently or, you know, equivalent in case of just the growth of the economy overall. Well, those corporations are are now, they're now, belong to the government. So now it's... And as you can see, I'm I'm becoming, uh, emulating Slavoj Zizek here, but <laughs> it's making my nose run. <laughs> That's what happens when you go when you go communist. You <laughs> you start to have a runny nose and you start to wipe it. Um, um, so yeah, uh, basically it's run by the government, but uh, with the difference is that they can still be run like private corporations. So still. You have CEOs that are rewarded according to the performance of the corporation, and you can have multiple corporations in the same economic sector, um, you know, vying against each other for for dominance, uh, you know, competing against one another. And and if a company fails, well, the government does not actually necessarily help it. 
um, and you know people can be fired. And so I, I specify. So it's yeah, they're government employees, but people can be fired. Um, co uh, corporations can be just let to go. You know, uh, to collapse, to go bankrupt, and to not be rescued. Um, so. But the things that there was no need, right? So my idea, it's the whole idea for having these private shareholders was that there needed to be a motivation, right? There needed to be a motivation for the company to succeed. Um, and the problem is that the government, well, uh, just the government by itself doesn't really care enough, right? Because a government employee is going to normally remain a government employee regardless of uh, performance. Um, although nowadays people have been sort of privatizing the way the government is run, so that's not really the case. And this is precisely what I'm going to be doing here is that we're, we're running it as if it were privates. And so the way to make that work, of course, is to ensure that the people who are in charge are actually rewarded according to performance. Um, and so compared to actual like Marxist type economies, well, there is a significant difference, which is um, uh, like A, there's still money. B, there's no plan of in the future of getting rid of the state. Um, C, there's no guaranteed employment. There's no forced labor. Uh, there is... Um, you know, no sort of protection against being fired. So it's 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 very different in that respect. And of course, there's this thing of uh, having multiple corporations being able to compete. And meanwhile, well, small corporations, uh, it's still like before. So small businesses, you can just have private small businesses owned by private people. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Um, that's gross. But anyway. Um... And oh yeah, there's um a new thing that I've I've changed is that um I'm just looking if there's something else that I've added to before getting to that. Um Yeah, well so instead of having a corporation go public once it becomes too big, once it becomes too big to be privately owned, instead of going public, now it just becomes uh, taken over by the government, right? But it, it's the same. It's as if, right? All you need is motivation. So the motivation now is that the CEOs are still rewarded according to performance. And then you can have like meta, you can have like a uh, fake, you know, mock shareholders uh, that are just government employees that like basically have to decide whether to like hire new CEOs or fire new CEOs. And each of these employees has several companies that they're in charge of. And then they those people get rewarded according to the aggregate performance of all the companies that they they're in charge of right um and so then uh, what i'm saying is that once uh, all economic production can be done by robots at some point i expect robots to be able to do anything that a human can uh, in terms of you know doing stuff they'll be able to talk and respond to people and all that and once they can do that there's no i mean they can probably do it better than humans and at that point, it makes more sense to just have robots do, you know, just Android, uh, you know, human-like, human-emulating robots just do all the tasks that humans do. But in some instances, it might be nice to have humans still, you know, just to be with an actual conscious human to interact with. So we still allow humans to actually do work, but then they'll just be employees. And so what I'm saying is that you cannot actually found a business anymore when that is the case when you've got that kind of technology. But... But what you do, so what you do instead is if you have a business idea, you want to do a small business. So say you want, you want something where there's like human touch. So you want to be like a, a, maybe like a psychologist, you know, sort of therapist, or maybe like a person who does massages or something like that. Something where you, you really want to have a real person. And so you, you tell the government, well, I want to do this. And so then the government uh, basically creates a, a corporation for you and hires you as an employee of that mini corporation. <laughs> So that's that's how this changes. <laughs> Otherwise, um, okay. So then I just put that. So since now the government takes care of everything, I sort of got rid of uh, the list of things that the government uh, takes care of. But I just I added to the stuff that um, uh, is taken care of for free. So first I added that the basic income also has to cover basic utilities, which was sort of implied. I mean, obviously I had that in mind, but I didn't actually write it. And I also, I'm now adding, so in the section three on, on what, what's now, uh, I mean, not section article three, which is the article four on the provision of basic uh, needs. Um, I'm adding that schooling for minors and emergency response services are provided for free and childcare may be provided for free. 
but that has been moved from the, the you know the article on uh, on production. <laughs> Um, let's see. I said before I said housing and food are not subsidized, so I got rid of that. And then so now, obviously, like, uh, housing, uh, oh, I actually have to get rid of this. Um, Yeah, and I get, so I got rid of the fact that having potentially, so I added the thing having potentially having government provided housing. But now, of course, all companies, big companies are provided by the government. So now most housing is going to be government housing. So, so, yeah. Uh, and I don't know if I'd already added that, that there might be a larger amount. Yeah. That I said that I added potentially larger amounts at more frequent intervals. So you have the basic income, and then you might also have like a much bigger amount given like every 10 years, for instance. Um, so then there's the income cap. So it looks like I've shortened it. So what did I shorten? Um, so I already, I'd already apparently fixed the cap to 12 times the basic income. So that had already been done. I'm saying that there's just a, a hard limit on the amount of inequality there can be. Um, oh yeah, so there was the stuff on uh, planets. So I got rid of all this sort of differences um, in uh, planets, and uh, now I got rid of that because I'm basically not expecting. Basically, what I'm saying is that there's a different uh, cap. And uh, and so basically, I'm not bothering to talk about that because uh, the income cap is going to be further lowered anyway. And so basically, what I'm saying is that uh, by the time uh, machines can do all production, and that should happen before there's multiple planets that are colonized. And so what I'm saying is that once production is taken over by machines, as I talked about before, then the income cap is at most three times the basic income. So you can really, at that point, it's almost more like a hobby, right? Your income, you're just going to be like a massage therapist. It's not like a big, a big thing. So you're not going to earn really that much more than the basic income. So it max out a few times more <laughs> than the basic income. Um, so, and uh, what I could add, um, is uh, each planet may have may have its own income uh, uh, cap uh, amount and duration. Yeah, and then they, they can just deal with that like that. Um, I mean, at that point, it doesn't really matter. <laughs> I don't, it doesn't, like, I don't need to spe specify the sort of complicated thing um, of, of how exactly, you know, how you deal with changing planets. Especially since you're only, you're not going to have the sort of income where you invest and then you only have an income in the long run. So at that point, um, the income cap might be shorter. The income cap is one, two, three times the basic income and can be, be set on uh, uh, on a period, period and can apply to a duration of as little Now it's just it's, see now it's just labor, so there's no like investment, so you're not gonna, and applies to, uh durations, between, uh what can we say, basically just the basic income. Uh, 
duration of the interval of the duration lasting from the interval and applies to duration lasting from the interval of the basic income <laughs> to <laughs> what shall we say? Maybe somebody like just at one time does something like really cool uh five Earth years. Okay. <laughs> So see, because before it was 30 to 68 Earth years, so now it's much shorter, right? Now it's the duration of the basic income, which is at most three Earth months. Um, and uh, and uh, so now it's... Um, so if you get the basic income every month, then your income cap can be as little as every month. And it can also be longer, so it can also be as much as, as foggy. <sighs> Okay, so that is that, and now rules on other matters. Okay, so the age of legal majority, now put it back down to, I made it to 13 to 16 to make it more palatable, but I decided screw palatability, 15 is fine. Uh, so I'm making it 13 to 15, especially because of the, the other change I, I've decided to make again, uh, which we're going to reach again uh, very shortly. Um, so this is all the same. So, okay, so the... Uh, activities that are, so this stuff, I, I've gotten rid of all, I've gotten rid of even more references to sex. So I've gotten rid of including uh, potentially displaying sexual acts, because um, it's potentially, right? So basically, at that point, I don't have to talk about it, because basically it's yes or no. So uh, I just got rid of that. So to not, you know, people, again, they're sort of anti-sex and stuff, so just get rid of that. I also got rid of the including uh, this, so the sex, instead I just made it sexual acts. And I got rid of consensual because that is implied, like it's just like all these other stuff. It's, everything's implied that's consensual. Uh, I said that molestation is not allowed, so molestation includes, you know, rape. So like I don't, I got rid of consensual. I got rid of, but obviously that's implied. Uh, and I got rid of paid sexual acts, sexual films, and acts with other species. That there was no need, but right? that's actually you can just that all falls under the banner of, of sexual acts. <laughs> Um, but like fundamentally the policy and change. Uh, for the uh, ownership of uh, and use of weapons, nine. Um, I got rid of specifically the list of what uh, they can, what people can and can't use. Uh, instead, what I'm saying now is uh, civil majors without a record of violent crime or forbidden speech. Um, so yeah, so now I added that forbidden speech because obviously if they do forbidden speech, that means that they are basically... <laughs> probably against the idea of the U U.S., and so you don't want them to be able to have weaponry, because the whole idea of weaponry is to, to have sort of, uh, uh, you know, citizen sovereignty, and those people, well, they're, they are not allowed to basically have citizen sovereignty. Um, so they're allowed to own and use weapons of a power such that civilians can collectively defeat all government forces. Um, and wait, I'll, I'll just... Um, for voting, I could also add that people with a record of violent crime or forbidden speech aren't allowed to. Uh, aren't allowed to vote. I have to add that. I forgot to add that. Um, wait, where where did I do this? Uh, all major, I wrote all majors may choose to be a candidate and encouraged to do so. Um, except for those convicted, convicted of violent crime or forbidden speech in the town. Hmm. 
you are forbidden. Being represented. Um. I'm changing this to all majors. So uh, to all all majors are allowed to vote and are encouraged. So I actually can just copy paste this. Um <laughs> Now, I encourage you to do so, except for those conv convicted of violent crime or forbidden speech in the past for 30 years. <laughs> so, yeah. I'm just sort of realizing stuff just as I'm saying it. For forbidden from voting. <laughs> okay. Yeah, because that's the thing. If you're forbidden speech, that means you're anti US and you can't. You can't allow those people to vote, and obviously loud crime is the same. Okay. So we've changed that. Um in the in the Snowland Majors. Are allowed <laughs> okay wait so I've got to copy paste this too uh, copy <laughs> okay civilian majors are allowed to own and use weapons of power such that civilians can collectively defeat all government forces right. Forbidden from <laughs> Okay. So basically, except for majors convicted of violent crime or forbidden speech in the past 30 years are forbidden from owning and using weapons. <laughs> Well, of course, they're still allowed to use, like, knives and stuff. Firearm lethal Firearm lethality or greater. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, that's it. So, civilian majors are allowed to own and use weapons of a power such that civilians can collectively defeat all government forces. So that's the idea. Popular sovereignty. Except for majors convicted of violent crime or forbidden speech in the past 30 years, were forbidden from owning and using weapons of firearm lethality or greater. <laughs> Persons with a record of violent crime or forbidden speech may be comparatively restricted in allowance of weapon ownership and use. So now, uh, so now I'm getting rid of that. Um... <laughs> So then basically, if you haven't done any anything bad over 30 years, we say, well, okay, but maybe you've changed. And so 30 years also is based on the fact that imprisonment is maximum of 30 years. That's based on the fact that uh, I'm from Switzerland, and in Switzerland it's 30 years um, maximum imprisonment. Like a life sentence actually isn't a life sentence, it's a 30 year sentence. Um, but civilians may not own weapons so powerful that a small number of civilians could threaten the U.S. So you've got to have this right balance. So you have to have the civilians that have control over the U.S. So it isn't the government that, you know, that rules over the civilians. It's the civilians that, that rule over themselves. Because, you see, the problem is that otherwise you could have potentially, like, some sort of militia or some, you know, like, a, not a militia, but, like, a government army that would take over. We don't want that. But at the same time, we don't want to have a private militia either taking over. But that's why you can't 
uh, well, you couldn't have a private militia really take over, but you could have a private militia because because it, it would be a lot smaller than you know the the total uh, other civilians, right? But and they would also have access to those weapons, but they could threaten it. Like for instance, if everybody has like nuclear bombs, they cannot like more than like a like really a a ton of nuclear bombs, um, like a lot of nuclear bombs, um, or something even more powerful. Then that could just threaten the you know to wipe out everybody. So that we can't allow. Um, so I already said, okay, you're not allowed to express false beliefs. I've already talked about that. This is going the same. Oh yeah, the language. The language is now just, I've again gone back to saying that it's just Yaglo. Um, so before I, I said that uh, language is homogenized and that you sort of, uh, you know, species modified to homogenize the practical abilities as much as feasible. But now I, I've changed all that. So what I've said now, I've gone back. I, I've already had this idea before, as I'm saying there's just one species. So the, the reason I, I backtrack from saying that there's just one species is that A, well, there's the fact that you had to kill the other species, which doesn't seem very nice. But in fact, you don't even have to kill them, right? You can just forcefully, like, change them. You can forcibly change them to become humans. Or you can just let them die out and have them replaced by humans or whatever. Like, you don't need to actually kill them. You can just replace them. And, um... And so, but then the the other issue, and that was really what was a deal breaker to me, is that you know different planets have different environments, and obviously you need to have different species. I mean, you, you know, you need to have a different physiology to be able to have optimal health in these different environments. Um, so now what I'm saying is that you're the same species, allowing for differences, the, the necessary differences, uh, to uh, be healthy in whatever your planet is. Um, so so obviously you're not going to be exactly the same species, but you're going to be as similar as possible. <laughs> And so the idea is you you basically try to see each other as being the same species, and also presumably we'll have the technology to actually you know change our body, you like inject yourself with something that actually changes you, to like change your circadian rhythm so that you're adapted to uh, a different you know you know uh, rotation period of the planet and adapted to different gravity, different atmosphere, all that, right? Um, so the idea is that it really is just one one species. Um, <laughs> And so, and so because of that, now I can just say that there's one language as well. Uh, I'm presuming that there's not going to be differences in environments between planets that would somehow make it impossible uh, for different, you know, different sort of subspecies to have the same language. And to presumably, I'm presuming that, you know, the kind of language that we can speak now is speakable uh, in other, you know, in the other environments of other planets. Um, hopefully that is the case. Uh, obviously, you know, it would have to be modified to some extent if, if that really isn't possible, but it, I mean, I'd be surprised that that not be possible. <laughs> and what I've changed is, <laughs> so as a result, I got rid of, because there's just one species, I got rid of the terraforming thing, right? So uh, I got rid of saying, you know, I, I, before I said the U.S. shall not terraform an already inhabited planet. So now that is no longer the case. Now you can you can terraform because the, the idea is that you'd have different species living on different planets and then they would get upset if they, their planet was made uninhabitable for them. But now since we're all the same species, that, that, becomes, that point becomes moot. So I got rid of that. And I've gone back to saying that... Um, you we get rid of what I'm calling biological caste, so um, that such as sex or race. So I'm going back to saying that we have to be uh, hermaphrodites. Before I said, okay, it's not really necessary because, you know, um, like uh, it's true, it's not absolutely necessary, but still much better, and it just feels silly not to do it since it's better. And it was really just to try to placate the people who would like hate my idea. But the things that the people who hate my idea would hate it anyway for all sorts of other reasons. So I don't think it's really going to change much, actually. Um, and it, it just feels it just feels more right. And I, I, I just feel more, yeah, I feel more good about my plan if I actually make people hermaphrodites. Um, and also, in any case, what I'm saying is that you're allowed to modify yourself. So if you really want to just be, uh, you know, a sexually differentiated person, you can. You can change yourself to, to become one. But to me, that is really a fetish. So we're not going to make people born according to your fetish, right? 
um, you can change yourself afterwards once you're an adult. Um, it's like, you know, so, um, and so what I'm saying is also without strong differences in design and function, without strong correlation between physical characteristics and mental attributes, um, I'm just going to change that to characteristic. All right. Without obvious physical or mental differences between families. Um, oh, Bisky. Oh, hi. I'm sorry, I didn't turn on the speech chat. Um, crap. I keep forgetting to do this. And presumably you're not here anymore. <laughs> He must have caught me a long time ago, because, um, <clears throat> I know I'm not crying, I'm just, uh, I have runny notes. Um, but basically, the reason I, um, uh, wait. I actually had thought of turning on speech chat, and I didn't for the reason that I just figured out it would just be brief. And I wouldn't bother interacting with people. Um, but it's turned out to be less brief than I was hoping. Um, <coughs> so, then... Um, What am I saying? Oh yeah, so so only majors can change themselves, and you're not allowed to change yourself if it leads to sort of having these tribes that create sort of social strife. So if you have people that decide to like become, I don't know, like become furries, you know, that like they have like tails and horns and stuff, and then they create their own little clan and they sort of act in a sort of segregating fashion, uh, that and that creates sort of social tensions, then that's not allowed because of the social tension. Hi. But otherwise it's allowed. Uh, uh, who is this? Oh, hi, mental states. Um, so I, I'm just even done with this. So I'm, yeah. Um, um, I'm just uh, sort of going over the the changes. So I'm saying again that I'm going back again to really unifying people. So I'm saying that there's just one species What's up, of buddy? humans. Well, just uh, going over the you know new changes. Uh, I think I'm. I feel like I'm pretty close to the end of this. Um, so I'm now back to having one species, one gender. Uh, so basically no gender, and uh, one race, so no race. So what I'm saying is there are no potential differences, right? Um, um, between... Uh, so I'm saying that there's... There, you got to get rid of sex and race. So there's not... There has to be... St without strong differences in design and function. So precisely, like, strong differences in design and function, well, that would be, like, you know, a, you know, male reproductive uh, organs versus female reproductive organs. That's a strong difference in design and function. So you get you get rid of such strong differences. Um, you also get rid of strong correlation between physical and mental characteristics. So for now, <laughs> there does seem to be a correlation, for instance, between uh, like physical appearance and uh, uh, mental characteristics. <laughs> And for instance, race. Well, we know that some races are, on average, smarter than other races. So that we've we've got to change. So like people with some, you know, particular physical traits that are linked to race. Well, we stop having that being linked to particular mental traits. Um, and also with taste and interest sufficiently similar within a species, so as to ensure social autonomy, which I already had before. Um, so I said Anders are made to all belong to the same species or meta species, allowing for necessary differences for good health on different planets. And unless it negatively impacts the four dimension factors, they are designed to be able to survive in as many of the settled planets as possible. Upon changing planets, um, and of course at this point, well, the settlement is going to be contingent. Um, so I'm going to get rid of as many planets. Survive in as many, planet, well, many planets as possible. Okay. And so miners are allowed to be changed just for the purpose of making, you know, if there's, if you're moving from to a different planet, then you can change the miners in your custody to uh, be better adapted to the new planet. Okay, and finally, so we're real specific to the incipient US. Um, so, 
what I've um what I what have I done here? I said the U.S. refuses to incorporate a state that wishes to be so, if doing so would significantly threaten the U.S. So, for instance, if there's a state that has some sort of revolution and says, we want to join the U.S., but that then there's another powerful state that says, if that state joins the U.S., then, we, then we're going to, like, bomb the shit out of you or something, then the U.S. can refuse to have that state join. So, uh, for instance, with the current situation, like Ukraine, uh, you know, Ukraine joining NATO. So, for instance, uh, Ukraine joins NATO, but then Russia says, well, we'll bomb you if Ukraine joins NATO. Um, so then you'd have to say no. So if in this instance, well, if NATO was the U.S., then uh, the U.S. would have to refuse uh, to let Ukraine join, for instance. Um, so or from the other perspective, well, like Mexico, the United States might refuse to have Mexico join the U.S. So uh, if that's the case, then you refuse Mexico to, to join uh, the U.S. Right. Um. So. Uh. So there's that. Then. Otherwise, I've kind of kept the same. I think. Okay. So then I got rid of all this uh, different tier zones. So before I had all these tier zones based on how rich it was to avoid to limit uh, internal migration. But now I decided to get rid of that. I, I figured like like screw that. You know that's just again it's just to try to. Um, you know, assuage the kind of people that probably wouldn't even like the U.S. for all sorts of other reasons anyway. So, like, screw them. They're just being selfish turds anyway. So I'm not going to... And actually, it's going to create much more enthusiasm for the U.S. for all the people who benefit from not having the income tier zones. And in any case, uh, what I'm saying is that we're going back to having a single basic income everywhere. And as a result, um, there's not going to be much drive for economic migration since, I mean, at least all the lazy people are just going to want to stay where they are because they're just going to have this, their same basic income in, in their place of residence. So, like, people in Africa are going to get the same basic income as people in Europe. So if people just want to live off a of basic income, they can just stay in Africa. And so there's not going to be that much of, a, you know, of um, you know, an inflow of migrants at that point to Europe. Um <laughs> So, so that's, so I've gotten rid of all that big article two here. Um, so, cause now article, the new article two is on, uh, you know, what like citizens and stuff can and cannot do. Um, and so basically the, I, I changed a few things. I can't really remember. Oh yeah. I just, I kind of, instead of having specific rules on, uh, you know, how one can become a, a citizen, like how much time and stuff. Instead, I just say it limits access to citizenship as required to ensure uh, the, the U.S. limits access to citizenship as required to ensure its economy is not excessively harmed by unproductive immigrants receiving basic income. Uh, that's it. So just uh, do the policy as as required. Um, and then what did I add? Um, so once I say once the strong majority, of, I added this, once the strong majority of economic production, population, military capacity belongs to the U.S., all persons from other states can become U.S. citizens and must become U.S. citizens um, uh, to reside in the U.S. for more than three months per year or do business in the U.S. Um, can become U.S. citizens immediately. Okay. Um, then let's see, what else did I write? Oh, yeah, persons may be punished for an act committed prior to acquisition of U.S. citizenship only if the act was illegal at the time and place of the act and is also illegal in the U.S. at the time of judgment. Um, time and place. And place of judgment. No, time. Yeah, like I don't know. Yeah. No, time. Okay, um... So then, I got rid of the fat thing of saying that um, uh, forbidden speech is allowed as long as a, a like to to limit popular discontent, um, and. I don't know if there's a thing where I said that the military can uh, 
because now I I said that the government can now potentially have the power to um, oppress the cit citizens if necessary. Um, but then I decided that that's not necessary. Well, what we want is really to have a population that actually um, agrees. But it, it's true. Like in in the case of a revolution that happens uh, without like the majority of the people actually uh, supporting it, I'm uh, I think it it does make sense to have a government that can uh, oppress the the population. Um, Well, except that people, oh yeah, what I said is that people, oh yeah, per persons known to oppose the U.S. are forbidden to use guns, and if threatening the U.S. may be imprisoned without trial if there are so many such persons that it is impractical to provide a trial. Persons suspected to oppose the U.S. may be forbidden to use guns. Um, so basically, yeah, that's what you do. Anybody who you think might be against the U.S., you don't allow them to use guns, right? You don't want to have, precisely, don't want to give popular sovereignty to the people who are against the U.S. Um, let's see. <laughs> okay, so that's kind of the same. Uh, and so then, uh, for corporations, I've kind of changed it because basically I kept it like that for originally. Um, so basically that foreign corporations are allowed to operate and then imports and exports may be taxed or forbidden wholesale or dependent on the state. And so then I say, once the strong majority of, uh, production population and military capacity belong to the U.S., corporations from states refusing to join are forbidden from operating in the U.S. and imports and exports from such states are forbidden. Whereas there are no more restrictions than in the former situation for states that wish to join but cannot. So that is um, that. Is that. Um, so basically what I'm saying is that, yeah, then court states that don't want to join, okay, that means that they want to be selfish. Uh, they want to do their own little nationalist thing and basically they want to benefit at other people's expense. Well, okay, you want nationalism, you get nationalism. You're getting complete autarky and you do not have any sort of, you know, you do not get to benefit at all from, from the universal state in any way. Um, like, that's 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 on you now at this point. And then finally, well, I, I realized that, you know, one of the things that this income capping and the, the capping and income plus capping of the size of the corporation you can own means that um, you can't, um, you know, you can't be very influential and it, it, nobody can be very influential by becoming, simply by becoming rich. And that's kind of a problem for me because I want to be able to remain influential as long as that needs to be the case, right? I need to be able to, you know, galvanize people. And for that, well, it's useful to have money to do that. And so, and, and in any case, like the whole point is that this constitution is legitimate because it comes from me, who am the wisest person to, a human to have ever lived. And so... Uh, as such, basically, it's my dictatorship to people. It, it's me saying, this is what you have to do. And so what it's essentially saying, it, it, it's basically a monarchy. It's an autocracy of me. And that, I mean, I never really used to like the concept of a constitution because I said, like, who, like, you know, it seemed like majority rule makes much more sense than a constitution who's written by a minority of people. Like, I was like, where, how do these guys have legitimacy to do this? And in fact, they didn't. And that's why I think, other constitutions are crap, like the United States Constitution is crap. What if the selfish um, state have key resources that your new world order needs? Can they be meddled with, their democratic process subverted in the name of the common good? Um, so basically, if if they are weak enough that you can just take them over, and that it doing so wouldn't like cause other states that might threaten the un universal state to to like attack the universal state. Basically, if you can do so without threatening the universal state, you just take them over. Um, and otherwise, uh, I just think it's unlikely that they would have key resources. Um, it, like pretty much any resource you can find kind of everywhere on the planet. There, there isn't any resource that is just found in one place. Um, so I think, I think 
again, like I said, it's only once the strong majority of production population and military capacity belongs to the U.S. Um, so, Take them over and yeah. subdue their population? No, not subdue them. Make them join the universal state, which is the opposite. It's liberate their population, right? Their population is currently being subdued by uh, their other state, and the universal state liberates them precisely. It enables them to have a, a, a universal basic income. It enables them to, to live wherever they want. It enables them to, to have access to all the basic needs that they, they might have. Um, it, it's the opposite of subduing them precisely. It's subduing the state to liberate the individual. Um, so, so yeah. Um, and of course... What if their view is that you have come to steal their resources? But you haven't come to steal their resources. You've come to to just again. It's from a it's from a see that's a kind of collectivist mindset of the of the quote conservatives is of saying that you know they're groups and one group takes resources from another. No, that's not the way I conceive it. I conceive it as an individualist perspective, but a a, um, a combined uh, a total individualist perspective. Uh, where everybody is to be treated equally and that everybody should have the same access to the same resources. So all individuals have the same rights to any resources anywhere as any other individual. So irrespectively of where you happen to live. So I have as much right to resources in the Congo as a person in the Congo has right to those resources um, and, and vice versa. And um, so basically from my conception, it's not stealing. They, on the other hand, they are stealing precisely from, from the actual proper conception, proper collect. It's not collect. Like, how, how do I say this? Instead of tribal collectivism, which is the sort of standard view up until now, it's instead it's universal individualism. And from the perspective of universal individualism, um, uh, this is what makes sense. And like they are in the wrong. And so what I'm saying is that, there, so basically as a result, what I'm saying is that I need to have, um, so what I was talking about on article, the last article, I need to have the, um, the power to, to take over. Uh, I mean, not the power to take over, but the power to, um, to do what I want. And yes, in theory, the power to take over, but, um, so basically nations with a lot of resources have to accept the burden to take care for other states for free infinitely. It's not even that. It's that you just merge. It's one universal state that just takes care of all of all individuals, that just ensures that all individuals are free and treated fairly. Um, again, you're seeing it from the from the perspective of separate nations. I, I think that's crap. That whole perspective of having separate states is crap. So we, we're again, we're not tribalist. We're not nationalist. We're not collectivist. We're universal individualists and. As such, what you do is everybody, all, all resources belong equally to everyone, right? Um, and so, so basically, so, so what I'm saying is that now, as long as I'm alive, I should actually have, um, you know, the power to, to do what I want, really. Uh, that just makes sense, since in any case, the Constitution is based on me, and people have to respect the Constitution. And basically, the Constitution is legitimate because of my wisdom. So, so what I'm saying is here, I wrote this. And see, I, I note how I wrote she. So I wrote, as long as she is wise, Nathan L. holds supreme absolute authority over the U.S. while striving to respect the laws of the U.S. unless deemed harmful to the U.S. So I finally added that. So yes, I, I'm finally making myself supreme dictator, ruler over of a uh, universal state. And But I wrote as long, so first, as long as I'm wise. So obviously, if I start doing bad things, then I do not have at all that authority. And um, also, additionally, so why did I write the she? That's simply because I'm getting rid of separate gender-specific pronouns. And so I took the male stuff for, like, I've been using man to refer to, like, what I'm calling, like, real humans. So there I took the male form. Um, and so, and I also written an Anders to mean humans and other beings of similar intelligence, so like what we'd call aliens. Uh, so that's also the male uh, version of the word. And so instead, for the pronoun, I'm taking the female version of the word. And also, I'm taking the female version of the word because uh, I'm intending to make everybody hermaphrodites. And so it would be like what we call futa, futanari, uh, and in Japanese, which is sort of a known thing. It's more known there. And and uh, they, well, basically, they look more like females. And, and I agree that they basically we should make the, the sort of hermaphrodite should basically be more or less like a female. Um, 
just a bit of masculinized and not masculinized female to some degree, like a more, especially more analytical uh, female, a bit more yang female and sort of, if you wish, a sort of tomboyish female in that sense, but it's still more female than male. So it makes sense to just call every, to use the female pronoun in this case. Um, so that's why I wrote, as long as she is wise, um, referring, of course, to, to me. And um, so, and that way we can stop worrying about all these pronoun things and what's your pronoun and uh, this person mispronoun me and whatever. Um, so um, hopefully that makes sense. So that is, uh, that is it. So I'm now, <laughs> now the queen of the universal state and <laughs> as such the, the universe. If, well, except I'll be dead by the time the universal state actually occupies the whole universe, or even even more than just uh, Earth. But, um, so, yeah, certainly more than just the solar system. Um, so that is it. Uh, if you don't have any other questions, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna stop with that. It's all right. It's again been pretty long. Again, yeah, it always takes almost an hour now. It's, I thought it'd be shorter than that. It's taken 51 minutes, so, um, yeah, probably there's more I could explain, but this is really all there is to, to say about that, um, really the, the basic stuff. All right, uh, so maybe you're gone, so I'm just going to stop it now.